Hey guys, it's Adrian Shepherd, author of I Succeed and creator of iSucceedBook.com. And today I'm honored to have with me Mr. Steve Ulsher, who earned the title America's Reinvention Expert. Steve is the author of the new book, Internet Profits, The World's Leading Experts Reveal How to Profit Online, and also of the USA Book News Self-Help Book of the Year, Journey to You, A Step-by-Step -step Guide to Becoming Who You Were Born to Be. He is also the creator and host of Internet Profits Live, it's a pleasure to have you with us on the line today, Steve. Well, thank you so much for having me. Ah. Now, that's just a quick little intro of uh, yourself, but uh, I know there's so much more to you. Could you tell us you know, your story and how you got to where you are today? Uh, sure. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, basically, uh, I'll keep this uh, as brief as I can, but long story short, I've been uh, an entrepreneur literally since my, uh, since my teens. Pretty much from the time I could uh, move a rake around and try to, um, you know, get paid for, for sh raking leaves or shoveling snow or selling speakers out of the back of a van. I mean, whatever, you know, whatever I could do to try to make uh, a couple bucks, I've always been uh, wired to do that. So it's, um, you know, it's an interesting story, an interesting path that's taken me from music. I played the drums for a number of years and then became a pretty decent DJ that uh, ended up. Uh, DJing all over and opened up my own nightclub when I was uh, 20 years of, uh, of age. So at 20 years of, of age, I opened up a non-alcoholic nightclub uh, mm -hmm. here in the States and uh, worked out well for uh, for a couple of years and then transitioned to catalogs and uh, dot coms and real estate. And uh, yeah, I, I actually got uh, involved with the online world really, online world really early when as a matter of fact, in 1993, I launched on CompuServe's Electronic Mall, uh, and then in 1995, created one of the first fully functional e-commerce sites uh, and launched that. So this is actually the, the 20th year now that I've been online. And uh, so it's been an interesting trek, and uh, there's certainly no stone that, uh, that I haven't left unturned, but, uh, but reality for me is that uh, about five years ago or so, I had a pretty huge wake-up call where I was with my stepfather who was very much a father to me, raised me since I was 10, and uh, he was very sick at, I mean, on his deathbed, literally, and uh, he could no longer communicate uh, verbally, but I was holding his hand, and I believe that we were able to connect through that point of physical touch, and I had a, a vision of my funeral, not of his funeral, but actually of my funeral, and I could hear the words being spoken graveside, which were, here lies Steve Olsher, he dedicated his life to chasing the almighty dollar, and that's all that was said. And it hit me really hard because my stepfather was really imploring me to to change who I was and change the path that I was headed down because ultimately my life was of benefit to me and, and those closest to me, but really no one else. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was really his way of saying that, you know, I, I know you and I know this is not the legacy that you want to leave. And so I took that as a, as a sign that I had to do something different and began putting pen to, to paper to share some of the tips and tools and strategies and shortcuts that had worked well for me in my life uh, so I could share those with others. I had no idea where I was going, no idea what I was <laughs> doing, uh, but that work eventually became the book Journey to You, a step-by-step -step guide to becoming who you were born to be, which uh, really was the, the starting point for my getting into uh, the current work of, uh, of being an author and being a speaker and along the path, uh, I've become very clear that I have an intuitive gift for helping people discover their what, as I call it. And so the question is, what is your what? What is that one thing that your soul is compelled to do? And, uh, and I have that gift for helping people really hone in uh, on what that is so they can achieve peace and prosperity, sharing that gift with the world. Great. Yeah, I love that. What is your what? Yeah, so many people just trudge to work every day and you know put in the eight hours and then come home, but they're just you know they're not doing what they're meant to be doing. They're just doing what they think they have to do, and they they, they get stuck in the the rat race, as we you know it's often called. And uh, I don't think that's the way to live. And uh, obviously, you had that wake up call when you you had you were chased the the almighty dollar, and I know that you had one of the uh, big uh, internet uh, sites, liquor.com, correct? Yeah, I still, I still actually own liquor.com. Oh, I'm, great, I'm great. the uh, co-founder and chairman, but I have nothing to do with the day-to-day -day on that. That's run out of San Francisco. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a team of uh, of people there, and I'm I'm actually based in Chicago. So you you deal with that a little bit, but you decide to get into sharing ideas and helping people live a better life. I mean, that's a big jump, really. Yeah, and so I mean, it's really when you talk about and you made mention of the fact that I'm known as America's reinvention expert. Well, I uh, this is not just something that I've uh, just kind of come across in so far as, you know, hey, this sounds like a great thing to do. I mean, let's reinvent our lives. I mean, this is something that I've actually lived and breathed, uh, you know, certainly in, in minor ways for decades, but certainly in a major way uh, over the past five years. I have to ask a quick question here. You know, you said you got into the, the Internet 20 years ago. Most people, you know, didn't even know what the Internet was back then. How did you see the potential of the Internet back then? You know, there wasn't the Internet per se uh, in 1993. You know, there were a lot of BBS uh, type of uh, 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 areas to connect and kind of this underground thing. Uh, But CompuServe and Prodigy and um, Excited Home, you know, and some of those, you know, companies were really just sort of in their uh, infancy stages, embryonic stages. Um, And in Chicago, maybe we were just one of those markets where, uh, they did a lot of advertising or something. I'm not sure because I remember going, of course, to the grocery stores and seeing the AOL discs and the Net Zero discs and mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, but for some reason, I got on the CompuServe bandwagon and um, just really became a fan of what they were doing. And I and and I mean, heck, I had the uh, you know the 14.4 baud modem, right? You know, where it was. Just <laughs> eek, eek. <laughs> You know, and and like literally, you know, here I am 20 years ago. So I'm in my early 20s at that point. And, uh, you know, it was to the point where literally, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a obviously a, a young man. And, and, you know, the Internet's made for two things, which, of course, is porn and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and selling stuff. Right. So, you know, reality is that I, I got to the point where I could tell literally by a woman's eyebrow if I wanted to see the rest of the picture or not. So. <laughs> You know, it's uh, yeah, you got to get good at, at certain things. I have skills that no one else needs. Um, <laughs> but you know, reality is that uh, I don't know. I just got involved very early, bought the modem, and um, had the computer. And I and and it wasn't even really until 1990, late 1994, uh, where I came across Netscape, um, and uh, and actually was on the World Wide Web. And I remember saying very clearly to uh, to my tech guy, like. Um, okay, great. Now what? You know, like we're on the internet, but where do we go? What do I do? And and I remember just that moment where it was just like, okay, great. Now what? <laughs> and so uh, I don't know, man. It was just one of those things where, for whatever reason, I uh, I came across the technology, uh, and I really uh, felt like this was something that uh, was going to change the game. Well, well, you you called it. What can I say? <laughs> great. <laughs> Well, I, I, yes and no. I mean, I called it, but if I had really called it, I would have done a lot more with it because mm-hmm. I remember at the time we were in the liquor business, we had a company called Liquor by Wire, which basically provided worldwide gift delivery of wine, champagne, spirits, just like FTD is for flowers. We use local retailers to make those deliveries. Um, but at the time, I remember saying to my tech, I was like, look, man, let's let's grab rum.com and scotch.com and, you know, gin.com and let's just grab them all because you could. And he said, no, you don't need those. You know, <laughs> let's just, uh, you know, let's just grab liquorbywire.com and lbw.com. And yeah, that's all we really need. And so it's like, oh, man, you know, in hindsight, but ended up buying the liquor.com domain in 1998, still fairly early on in the game. But man, I remember thinking like, what the hell? Let's just get them all. Mm-hmm. Well, as you said, hindsight, right? Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, uh, you definitely saw something a lot of people didn't. So um you know, and it led you to where you are today, where now you're sharing what you learned in the form of uh, seminars, as in your Internet Profits Live, which uh, I hear is a great program. Uh, Brendan Burchard, I believe, was there, and uh, maybe Sohail Khan. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah we yeah. had Brendan and Sohail and Joel Kahn and Jason Van Orden and Pat Flynn and Vishen Lakani. Yeah, it was great. It's a fabulous lineup of people. Uh, I'm not sure if the people listening know those people, but they are definitely some people that they should look into for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, your book, uh, Internet Profits, I mean, um, I, I, I went through it and, you know, you've got about 25 different experts. Is that True. Right? In, yeah. In, in the, yeah. 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 
And I was thinking when I read it, I thought, well, there's a lot of information here and it's great. Everybody should pick it up. But I thought, well, you know, you live the Internet. But a lot of people out there who listen to this maybe have not really gotten into the online business yet. But they might be thinking about it. So, you know, as you went through the interview process with these people, what were like one or two things that stuck out in your minds that you thought like, wow, that is some good information. or That's just a, a wow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, right? Because the, the the book, which, by the way, for those who aren't familiar with it, Internet Profits, Profits is spelled P-R-O-P-H. ETS, and it's all about the world's leading experts revealing how to profit, which is spelled in the traditional sense online. Uh, and I literally spent 18 months interviewing, working alongside of, studying with uh, 25 of of the experts. Because, you know, reality is, like I said, I've been online for a very long time. But as I looked at where I was, it just became very clear that I know a lot about the Internet, but I really don't know enough where I'm just absolutely killing it in a way that, you know, some of these folks are. And what are they doing? You know, what are they doing and how are they doing it? And the same names kept popping up over and over again. And so those are the folks that I ended up reaching out to um, who who really just said, you know, um, yeah, I mean, this is what I'm doing. This is what our team is doing. This is how we're doing it. It was just, you know, not everyone said yes, but those that did were just so forthright. Uh, with their information. And it's not an anthology. The, the 25 chapters are not written by the experts. We, you know, I, I, I wrote the, the chapters based on that work of studying with and interviewing them, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, look, the, the reality is that there's just there's nuggets in every chapter of this book. But just to kind of give you uh, a couple that really stood out, you know, number one is just the whole uh, idea of creating alliances. Um, and I, and more than anything else, this is how these guys have really grown their businesses, which is by aligning themselves. Um, sorry about that. Hold on one second. I just lost my mic. Now I got it back. Um, but by aligning themselves with, uh, with others in the space, people who really mm-hmm. understand that a rising tide lifts all ships. Mm-hmm. And so what they have done is they've really just reached out for other people to say, hey, you know, I've got some great products and services. You've got some great products and services. You know, we can't possibly create enough to, to satisfy the insatiable, uh, you know, uh, appetite for products and services that our customers have. So let's combine forces. And every now mm-hmm. and again, I'll tell my folks about your stuff and you tell your folks about mine and we'll pay each other if there's any sales. And that's kind of how that whole affiliate thing got started and joint ventures, et cetera. Mm-hmm. You know, but really, uh, I mean, that's that's just something that's so amazing to me is how you find the right people who really understand that if we work together, we can do amazing things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's really how these folks built their businesses more more than any other way. And the other thing is, um, and I've got a coaching program, co- program called the Circle of Ten. Uh, and one of my coaching students actually coined this phrase, and, uh, and I love it. And, uh, and, and what, what he says, is, it's, uh, my student's name is Jay Foster. And, and what Jay says is that, you know, ultimately, and this is the second tip here, uh, it's all about, you know, getting something out there, right? Just, just mm-hmm. getting it done. And just get it out there and then – get it right mm-hmm. and, and then get it right all the time <laughs> and then teach it to others. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I really love that. And that's really what these guys are so good at is they understand that the stars are never going to align. It's never mm-hmm. going to be absolutely perfect. There's always going to be something about what you do that you're just going to look back on and go, man, that was kind of crappy. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, I've probably had a hundred different iterations of my own personal site in the last, you know, 15 years. And every time I create a new site, I look at it and I go, man, that last site really sucked, Mm. you know? And so reality is that that's how it's going to be. But at the time you think it's great. And so Mm. that's just it is you got to get it out. Then you got to get it right. Then you got to get it right all the time. And then you got to teach it to others. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, as you said, you know, when you look back, you think it's garbage (laughs) maybe, but when you're going through it, you, you think, oh, this is, this is just the bomb. This is the best, but that's because that's where you are at that moment in time. And as you grow as a person, you know, you have to, you can see what's wrong with what was, but that's what we, we should always be doing, developing ourselves, making ourselves better. And then naturally our products and services will also change. Naturally. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if someone were to come up to you right now and say, look, I want to get started uh, online. 
uh, business online. I, I want to. I've got an idea for a product. I want to get on, online. Uh, what What would you say to them? I'd say, uh, unless you're crystal clear on what your what is, drop the idea because ultimately, uh, most of us end up chasing uh, the opportunity as opposed to creating the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so, reality is that you got to get out of these commodity-driven circles where you're always competing on price and trying to do something that's already been done. Mm-hmm. You know, reality is we're not. None of us are going to are, are going to create a new wheel. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just that, that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is, of course, we can paint it our own color. Mm-hmm. But what I would tell someone, quite, uh, I mean, unequivocally, and 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 just based on on the thousands of people that I've worked with, I can tell you that. Uh, you know, it, it's just imperative that you're able to answer the key question of what is your what? What is that one thing that your soul is just compelled to do? Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. you can build a business around that, mm-hmm. you're golden. Otherwise, everything else has an expiration date and it's not sustainable. <laughs> it just becomes not, it's not sustainable. So, sure. you know, reality is that you have to, if you're going to get online in the game of, of selling something, a product, a service, et cetera, you're never going to compete in the commodity-driven circles. The only thing you can compete on is your perspective, your experience, and your mm-hmm. unique gift. And that's mm-hmm. what you have to build something around. Right, sure. I mean, your USP, right? Uh, well, yeah, but ultimately, I mean, that's, that's typically reserved for a traditional business, and mm-hmm. we're, we're in the empowerment business. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, USP is just it's a natural byproduct of who you are. I mean, that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's again, most of the time people are looking at, you know, hey, you've got a marshmallow. I've got a marshmallow. Here's my USP around, you know, this marshmallow. And mm-hmm. so the, dif- the difference is that no one can compare themselves to you. You know what mm. I'm saying? Our DNA, sure. Uh, sure. Your, your DNA is wired uh, to excel in, in ways that mine mm. isn't and vice mm. versa. Mm. And so, I mean, I appreciate the, the reference to the USP, but in, in, in my way of thinking, um, it, it's irrelevant. It's a moot point because you mm. are who you are, and sure. that is, in fact, just a permanent USP. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, very well said. Yeah. I mean, you know, Tony Robbins is a great example of this. This guy's been out there 20, 30 years, you know. Longer. And, I mean, God, dude, he's like it's, – it's amazing how long he's been doing this now, but yeah. And he's still number one, and he, he – you know, people could – get out there and copy all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's not hard to get a hold of. You can go to libraries and listen to it and copy it down and jot it down, whatever, transcribe it. But you can't be Tony. You can oh, be exactly. somebody else. You can be, you know, uh, you know, Brendan Burchard or you can be Zig Ziglar or somebody. But, but Tony is Tony. Zig is Zig. Brendan is Brendan. They're, and they all appeal to a different group of people. Some of them, in, you know, uh, like the same things. But inevitably, we are different and we have our little i don't know that that you know as you said that personal usp so yeah I like exactly that. i mean it's, it's in your dna there's nothing you can do about it i mean you can spend a lifetime in denial about what it is <laughs> but ultimately it's there and it's just it's simply sure. something that uh that you have to tap into because there are others that are waiting for you to do so yeah yeah and unfortunately a lot of people don't tap into it and end up uh, going to the grave sometimes, never sharing their unique gift with the world. And that's a, that's a real shame sometimes because, you know, they could be incredible conciertos or, uh, you know, the greatest technology ever, but it's just never out been given out to the world just because it never had a chance to, to grow, unfortunately. But yeah, mm, mm, mm. I think that's what we're here for, to get people to uh, chase their dreams, go after what they believe is in them. And, uh, you know, give it everything they got. Right. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, uh, as I said, we're, we're in the empowerment age now. And mm. so mm. I think we've moved past even the information age. Mm. Um, and, and so the empowerment age is really all about being clear on, on who you are and how you're wired to excel and empowering others to move in a direction that gets them closer to who they inherently are or helps them to share their message uh, with others. And so uh, it's just it's a different way of thinking. I mean, because all, at, at, at the information age, if you will, is all about just putting information out that was helpful. But in the empowerment age, it's really not about um, selling. It's about serving. And, mm-hmm. and that's, and that's a, a huge shift. Yeah, yeah definitely. 
Okay. Um, now, I know you've had a few hiccups along the way, um, but hiccups often lead to some of our greatest insights later on. Uh, could you, do you mind sharing one such hiccup? Uh, well, there's been no shortage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's certainly been no shortage. I mean, you can go back to the, the nightclub. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, if you remember when you were 20 years old and, and tried to do anything, I mean, you, you know, you're just a kid, you just don't really know anything about anything, but, you know, at that point it was, uh, it, I knew everything I needed to know about everything. Right. And so, <laughs> uh, you know, in hindsight, uh, we had a really good thing going and, uh, and I ended up murdering it because of my ego. And, uh, and, and that's just one of the things where you learn that, other people are very capable of helping you, of doing what they do best. And what I, what I firmly believe is that everyone is an expert in something. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so what you have to do is, is become very clear on what they are an expert in, what expertise do they bring to the table, and mm -hmm. allow them to absolutely uh, just, just shine and, and, and hopefully – uh, move well beyond your success in, in so far as, you know, you, you want to teach people to achieve more than you possibly can. And you want to give them the freedom to achieve more than you ever did. And mm -hmm. so that's the sign of a good teacher. That's the sign of a good leader. Uh, and certainly that's one of the things that I have learned along the way here is you really do need to empower people to create success that not only rivals but surpasses your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. Uh, a lot of people when they're <laughs> younger, and I, I made this mistake too, is, you know, you think you can do everything and, you know, you'll just work harder in, in, in areas that you're weaker at, but, you know, there's just not enough time in the day. You know, you can't learn everything. Uh, yeah. And it's pointless to try because you end up suffering. You end up destroying the areas that you're good at then because you're wasting time on things you're not really good at. And uh, that's why it's Im imperative to uh, find the right team, uh, surround yourself with the right team members. And that takes time to learn who is a good fit for you, both personality-wise and skill-wise. And uh, sometimes it takes courage to say goodbye to some people who uh, don't fit the bill sometimes. Um, yeah. But uh, it's part of life. Yeah, and we actually, uh, I mean, just kind of going back to a, to a lesson learned, I mean, we, we actually were ready to go public with Liquor.com in 2000, which is, of course, when everything imploded. <laughs> uh, but we had the S1 filed and the whole nine. I mean, I'd worked uh, nine years on this company because we started in 1991 as a catalog company, and then 93 with CompuServer, then 95 online, and then 98 we became Liquor.com. Uh, so nine years I had built this company up into a multi-million dollar uh, business along with my mom. She was my partner on that. Uh, and um, and we just got blinded by the dot-com light. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at this point uh, in time, late 90s, you know, 99, even just the first couple months of 2000, you, know, you were starting to see, you were still seeing just huge amounts of money flowing into the dot-com world. You know, ideas on a napkin would, you know, these guys would leave with a check for a hundred million bucks, you know? So mm -hmm. it was just like, man, we got blinded by that dot com light. And so when someone said, Hey, you should take this company public. Of course we said, yeah, that's a great mm -hmm. idea. And then we ended up signing away our management rights to the company because wall mm -hmm. street wanted to see more gray hair. They wanted to see experience this, that, and the other, which we didn't have. And we believed them. We bought into it hook, line and sinker. And so the other, you know, when, when everything imploded, and the S1 was filed in March of 2000, and then, you know, we couldn't get out, and it became very clear these people that we had hired to bring us to the promised land and, you know, got all the the lettered folks, the CEOs, CFOs, you know, all those people uh, in place, you know, it was just we couldn't we couldn't do anything with it. It became very clear that they were just absolute, I mean, they were incompetent. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the nicest way I can put it, and uh, and and our hands were tied because we had signed away our management rights. So you know, reality is that the other side of the equation is not. You know, of course, everyone is an expert in something, but at the same token, you know, really you have to trust yourself and you have to believe that you can get your business to the level that you want it to reach without mm -hmm. anyone coming from the outside world. To make it happen for you. Now you mm -hmm. can always hire consultants and get mm -hmm. some outside perspective, 
sure. but you you uh, you absolutely can accomplish significantly more than you may believe you can. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I read that story in your book, and I, I can imagine how you must have felt. Oh yeah. Uh, seeing your baby just kind of go down in flames that must have uh, been very very tough. And, yeah. Uh, a, Gut wrenching, I guess yeah. is the best word I can. Yeah, describe. and literally, I mean, you know, you talk about the brink. I mean, that was I had nothing to show for it. Every dime mm. that that we made, we put back mm. into the business. So, I mean, literally, all of my savings, everything was in the business. So, uh, I mean, that was it. Might as well have been bankruptcy, as far as I was concerned, because there was no cash to speak of. Well, wow. that's tough, 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 tough. But look at you now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on who's looking, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I'm sure you have your mentors. Who are some people that you listen to and, and why them? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I am a, a continual student. I believe that the best teachers are continual students and the best mm -hmm. students are continual teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for me, one of my first mentors uh, was my grandfather, and I was fortunate enough to, to be able to work with him for a number of years and learn from him. Uh, and so that that was really just a, a special period of time in my life. Uh, and then, you know, over the years, it's it's moved to to different people. One of my uh, college professors uh, turned out to be a really great mentor for me. Uh, and more recently, uh, Steve Harrison, who runs the Quantum Leap program here in uh, in the states, uh, is someone that I very much admire and, and was part of his program. Uh, and then, you know, look, I'm, I'm always uh, enamored with the, the folks like you're probably enamored with the, the Sir Richard Branson's and the mm -hmm. Sam Walton's and, mm -hmm. you know, those who have been able to accomplish amazing things. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I certainly have admiration for people like Ryan Dice and Brennan Burchard and Jeff Walker and, uh, of course, Jack Dorsey and, you know, Tony Shea and those sort of people. Um, but in terms of hiring them as a mentor, uh, I have not done that. The only one that I've hired as a mentor, as a coach, uh, is Steve Harrison. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. Um, having a mentor is something that a lot of people think they don't need, and yet I think eventually they find out they do need. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, what I try to do is I try to go to a conference every month. And so mm, even though mm. I don't hire uh, mm. a particular coach mm. anymore – uh, I'm I'm still mm. surrounded by wonderful people, meet wonderful people, but I learn from amazing people every sure. month. And um, fabulous. And, and so, yeah, I mean, like I'll be going to Evan Pagan's thing uh, mm. here soon, and uh, yeah, you just try to learn from those who have been there and have knowledge to share. Awesome. Yeah, some great names, and I love all their materials. I mean, I'm here in Japan, so I don't really have the access like you do, but I do have uh, access to their materials thank, thanks to the internet so uh, i have my own little library and i just download on, download a lot of it onto my iphone and uh off i go <laughs> everywhere yep. with it so um you know you do the best with what you can in the places you are so if uh, anyone's listening to this is thinks that they can't have a mentor because they don't have access to such seminars or they can't hire a mentor because of cost or whatever um i'm i'm here to tell you that you don't need uh, to do that, if you just want to start small with just a you know CD program or a MP3 uh, set or whatever, or even just a book, you know that that really does uh, get you started and get you on the way. Yeah, I mean, like as a perfect example, I encourage you and your audience to go and pick up a free copy of my book, which you can grab at Internet Profits P R O P H E T S dot com slash free and you know, I mean, internetprofits.com slash free, grab the book and, and you'll learn right. from 25 of the world's leading experts right there. And even if you got one tip from each chapter that you implement into your business, it, it'll be a, a much different 12 months for you. I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's a great book. I love it. And the, the way you write it, I, re I really like it. I, it's easy to read. Uh, it's uh, fun. And uh you really have a good way of expressing your uh, knowledge. So thank you for that. And well, uh, absolutely. I hope everyone checks it out. Yeah, and I hope you and everyone posts a, a lovely five-star review on Amazon of for course. when you get a of chance. Course. I will do that. <laughs> I will do that. Okay. Um, now, since we're on the topic of books, and uh, I, of course I'm recommending your book highly, but what are two books that you would say, two or three books in your mind that are must-reads for anyone 
who is trying to get ahead in today's fast-paced environment. It can be on any topic, just two or three books that you think are must-haves for a success library. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of autobiographies. Uh, mm-hmm. So any, any autobiography from someone that you admire, uh, I, I definitely suggest that, uh, that, that you, you take a look uh, at, at picking it up or, or renting it or, you know, whatever you want to do. But um, just, I mean, from my personal perspective, um, Donald Trump's autobiography, Sam Walton's autobiography, uh, Richard Branson's autobiography, Sumner Red, Redstone's autobiography, Steve Jobs, uh, the book by Walter Isaacson, um, you know, is, is really good. Uh, Bill Clinton, My Life, uh, you know, I mean, there's just, I, I, like I said, I'm a huge fan of autobiographies, mm-hmm. uh, just because I, I love the path, I love the trail, I love following mm-hmm. the progress and seeing mm-hmm. how people got to where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, again, whatever area of interest you have, whether it's business or personal development or yoga or jiu-jitsu or whatever it might be for you, uh, you know, track down the, the, the books from people who uh, are in that space and, uh, and read uh, their autobiographies if, um, if they're available because th- that to me is the best teaching. Okay. Good advice. Good advice. Um, now, I know you're a father like myself and you have three sons, correct? Yep. Okay. And so what advice do you have for parents out there, you know, who are raising kids in this empowerment Get rid of them age. as quickly as you possibly can. <laughs> Just save yourself. Run. <laughs> Just, yes, find a, a nice shopping mall and drop <laughs> them off. off and run quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's hard, dude. I mean, <laughs> you know, being a parent, they, they don't, nobody trains you for this shit. I mean, mm. it's, you know, it, it's hard, dude. I mean, some people just love being parents and, you know, they're just cut out for it and they live and breathe this. I'm not that kind of guy. I mean, I'm, I'm the first one to tell you, kids suck. I mean, I love them, but God damn, they just, man, they suck your energy. I mean, you know, my after our third, I got fixed. My wife got fixed. You know, we, we still wear condoms and we abstain. So, I mean, there, there's no way we're having another kid. It's just not possible. I mean, God, that first year of sleepless nights and just constant complaints and puking and piss and shit everywhere. Who prepares you for this stuff? I mean, God, it's just such a, you know, who tells you to have children? The only person who tells you to have children is someone who has a child because they want you to be as miserable as they are. And that, that's the reality. So yeah, just don't do it. I mean, really, that's, that's my best. It's like, you know, when I was a kid, when you were growing up on the milk cartons, you used to have a picture of a cigarette and it would have like that circle with the line through it says, don't start. You know, and so that, that's it. Just don't have sex or just be gay. I mean, that's, that's probably what I would recommend. Just be gay. Okay. Well, that's interesting advice. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a, I'm a, I actually love being a father myself, and I'm one of those guys who just, you know, sacrifices everything for his son. And I do like the soul sucking a little bit myself, but um, <laughs> it's funny to hear that. Yeah, just kidding. Just I know, kidding. I know. You know, I love my kids. Don't get me wrong. But, sure. you know, at the same token, it's um, it's it's tough, man. You know, no sure. doubt. It's tough. It's, sure. it's, it's it's a full time thing. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they're but they become a legacy. You know, that's the one thing that uh, people forget, is, you know, as we get older, that uh, we have to pass on our knowledge to other people. And of course, we do that through our books and through our uh, podcasts and seminars and whatever. But your kids are the ones that really you know, pass it on to generations to come, which is, uh, which is really special. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's, that's something I love to do it. And, you know, my son's only, he's just about to turn five actually today. He's about to turn five. No, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, you know, he, he, yeah, once he turns six, he's going to start his, his, uh, uh, empowerment training, training, I should say, or, um, you know, self-development training, because I want him to understand, uh, from a young age, the possibilities that exist because mm-hmm. never in the world have we existed at such a time where so many opportunities are available to us uh, at, so easily. Um, and, but uh, it takes sometimes a great foundation to be able to take advantage of them. And I think that's one thing that I love about information products is they give you a great way of looking at the world and starting to see just what is available to you you don't have to do exactly what they tell you, but it makes it, it creates the mindset, uh, and I think that's where everything comes from. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely.
Okay, um, so you told us about your book uh, and the free thing. Uh, could you tell us the website again so that people can go and check that out? Yeah, so I mean, there's two main sites that uh, that you want to check out. One is the main site, which is Steve Olsher, O-L-S-H-E-R dot com, uh, and you'll get access to all sorts of information and uh, free products and webinars and whatnot there. Uh, and then if you want the book Internet Profits, uh, again, you can grab it for free at Internet Profits, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S dot com forward slash free. Excellent. So I hope people do check that out. Um, Steve, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Any final words? Just understand that you uh, you really are uh, a gift to us all, and we're waiting for you. And ultimately, you know, it's it's easy to to spend a lifetime in denial about who you inherently are. Uh, but ultimately, you have to ask yourself, you know, is is that in fact the legacy that you want to leave? And I wholeheartedly believe that you have the the power, the ability. Uh, to massively impact not only those who share this lifetime with you, but also those of lifetimes to come. And it really just boils down to being very clear on how you answer the question of what is your what. And once you can answer that question, I promise you, absolutely everything else will fall into place. I couldn't agree more. Okay. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, I hope we can do it again sometime. And uh, good luck with everything. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.